Got my Japanese maple here that was in the cold frame last year. Before I put it in this, it had the nursery pot. I built this. I think I built it too wide to go back into the cabin frame. This is 19 and a half inches. We gotta go check the cabin cold frame entry door. 17, 17 and 7 eighths. There you have it. That door is 17 and 7 eighths. That's not gonna fit 19 and a half. So I have to take this apart and redo it. Now, typically we wouldn't do a repot in the first weekend in October on a maple, but this isn't gonna be a repot for structural purposes. This is just gonna be for winter storage. Typically we're gonna repot because it's uh, um, no longer percolating. We're not getting any um, water and nutrients through the soil because it's so overgrown, which is again, again root bound, that word root bound. Um, we might do it for aesthetics reasons, right? And we might repot when we think there's something going on with the soil or the roots and we want to check it out. In this case, a whole new category for me. It's a beautiful sunny day, uh, lower 50s, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to put this in a little bit smaller frame. Now I do know when I repotted this, I put it into one of those uh, kind of like an Anderson flat, um, but it was a square pot that's used for uh, fish pond plants. So I know it's skinnier in there, and so some of the bonsai soil will kind of drift away to the sides and fall off, and then I'll just build this a little bit tighter and it'll be good to go. So we won't expose a lot of roots, we won't cause too much stress, we just gotta make it smaller. So we have to tear it apart and put it back together. Hey everyone, welcome to Dave's Bonsai. Uh, in the sense that I have a branch that splits into two, shoots in here, so I'm probably gonna cut this thing off right about here this fall. I've taken my, uh, knob cutter and I've gotten rid of some of that. So we just put them on the bottom, growing upwards into the we bay. We up the trees and then we water as we need to. We try and get rid of those air pockets. Before I tear it apart out there and have that sun exposed on there, even though it's kind of a cool 50s day, that sun is going to still dry out those roots. So I want to keep the damage to the roots in this kind of a late fall modified repot. Um, is possible, right? No damage to the roots. We just want to get a little bit smaller size. So I'm, my outside dimensions have to be 17 and three quarters or smaller. So to be safe, I'm going to go 17 and three quarters. So my first job is to look for some spare wood in the garage. This one isn't, isn't very tall uh, or wide, I should say, but it's long enough. Got some particle board here, could be one side. I got this leftover piece of uh, decking that will be strong, long enough for one side. So we have to make some measurements and get to town. So after going back out and remeasuring the pot for the depth, I had need at least a minimum of eight inches for the depth from the bottom to the top. And I don't remember what the bottom of the last pot looks like, but I think I can use that as a bottom, I believe. And I'll have these extra pieces here for the sides. So what I have to do is I have to create something that is gonna be 17 and three quarters long and at least eight inches deep. So we got 11, we've got 13 and a half, so they're not the same size. And this one's just too thin. But I got this guy right here. Now this is super thin, leftover kind of uh, paneling type material. It has that white wash look to it. But I don't care aesthetically, this has to keep it uh, together intact for the winter. And then we're gonna put this uh, tree in a brand new pot in the spring. I'm looking forward to that. So uh, this one I could cut in half and use these as two walls, but it's really flexible or flimsy, right? Flexible, flimsy. Uh, flexible sounds wonderful, but flimsy sounds awful. Uh, as long as we have enough connection points, I can get this thing on here. Maybe I could even double it up or something and make it doubly thick. Um, the best part for me is that it's free because it's leftover wood in my garage. As I was talking here, I just saw this one right here. That one's gonna be wide enough 17 and a half, so that could be the inner dimensions. And then the, the height, ooh, it's only seven and a half, so it's a little bit tight. So this is a possibility as well. So with all this spare lumber pieces parts, we will be able to put this together. So I'm gonna set up the uh, table saw first, and then we'll go ahead and make a couple cuts so we have something that's at least the same, the th same thickness. So we needed at least eight inches deep. So we're gonna go ahead and raise the blade up and make this nine inches. 
we're going to give ourselves an extra inch just because I want to make sure four and an eighth, four and an eighth. I want to make sure that we have some extra in case we need it. So that one's already there too low, but we're going to be able to cut this guy right here. All right. So I'm going to use this as my guide and here we go. My glasses are on. Excellent. So we now for sure have a strong front and a strong back. The sides might be a little weaker, um, but we are going to work with what we got and put some stuff together. Now let's get a length on here and we'll use uh, another saw for that. Now we're ready to make the box. We're going to make the first cut at about 17 and a quarter. Those will be the two, uh, two of the sides. And because this doesn't have to be absolutely pristine, I'm ready to go. The saw not quite big enough for that, a little bit over uh, 12 inches, so I just have to flip it over. And there we go, there's one side. We have a front and a back. Now we just have to get some sides on here. So now that I got the preliminary cuts here for a new box, I gotta see how the bottom's gonna work on the old box, so we have to go take that one apart. So let's go do that next. So this thing definitely is a beast. Super, super heavy. Don't wanna be moving around too much. I got the tarp down below so I don't waste all of this soil. We're just gonna use recycled soil. I am gonna take all the uh, tea bags, the fertilizer, and put them to the side. And then we're gonna just start uh, un undrilling here. And we're gonna see how things fall apart. Not too bad. We just got uh, one side down and the, 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 the soil's not going too crazy. Come around and do the front. Here we go. There's side two. So you can, can see the multi-layers in here. So I put some uh, foam rubber around here. I'll get a close-up of that. So you see I didn't have all soil in this big box. I have uh, part of the uh, edge of the uh, construction there. And then the box fit within those walls that you're seeing right here. And then I needed to fill some space because I didn't have that much soil at the time. I didn't want to put this massive amount of space. So here I put in these, these uh, kind of those uh, water pipe insulators. And look at this right here. We got a big old root hanging right there, growing like crazy. Okay, let's uh, slowly take this more apart and see what happens on the inside here. So under normal circumstances, I would not transplant or repot this tree for a good two to three years. But because I can't put it in my cold frame, that was an error in judgment this uh, spring. I didn't take my measures, measure twice, cut once, you know, that whole thing. I wasn't able to do that. I didn't do that. I went too fast. So I have to repot it here, kind of a mild repot in the fall. Um, one of the things that you actually don't want to do with most of your bonsai trees have a really super duper massive pot where where roots can do this very thing right here this is like uh, six to eight inches of growth super leggy only fine ramification uh, small amounts of ramification and so it just got has all this room to get real leggy growth right so we do actually want to make it as small and compact as possible so you get more splits and more ramification depending upon how healthy the structure is above of course but nothing's falling apart yet, which is good, so that means it's kind of holding together. One of the cool things about digging into my pot right now is I just watered this thing a couple of days ago, and it's interesting to see how moist it is down lower. And we got some big soil down here, and there's still moisture, plenty of moisture down deep, even though the top seems a little dry. Um, but you can see moisture even if you just rub away that first layer. So we got to just take some more apart carefully and see what we're going to have to work with. So 
there we go. So all that wood was temporary. I knew it was going to be temporary. I knew I was going to throw it away at the end of its life here. So everything's holding its shape real nice. I've got these buffers in here, so those are going to have to come off. Carefully take those off in case there's roots around there. And that again is because I had so much room in this pot and I didn't want to have that much room. And I had these laying around, these uh, pipe insulators. So now you can see it's getting smaller. We've, we've lost an inch about with just the removal of the walls and those black foamy parts. And I've got all kinds of roots dangling out here, which is nice. And I do realize that I'm at the edge of my square pot. So I'm gonna have to measure my square pot and it's awfully close to the maximum size. So I might have to do some thinking about this before I uh, put this back into this same pot down here because the lip here is a half an inch wider on both sides, all four sides. And then the, the inside is skinnier. I know the tree will fit in there. So I might just have to make a brand new box that's solid and take it off of this uh, Anderson flat type pot. So I'm gonna have to lift it up and see here. And it's still tied. There we go. So I'm trying to lift the pot up. There we go. So this is the challenge, we get into bigger trees. An extra person on staff right now would be super helpful. So I think what the challenge is, is I got some, I got a center piece down here at the bottom to keep this off the ground. This center uh, one by one down here was keeping it off the ground, keeping the air flow underneath so it wouldn't like ever be on solid ground and not get air in there. I may have wrapped some wire around that guy, but I don't feel any wire. Mm, yes, maybe I do. All right. So let's take a quick peek. Aha, time for the wire cutters. This is a big heavy tree. But I had four, two full wires in there, holding this thing in there. I must have thought it was gonna topple over. There we go. Yeah, there was the bottom piece. And I had wire going through that. So, I gotta measure this next. So that means the wood we cut has a perfect half inch overhanging because we made this 17 and a quarter. And even if we put a piece this way, we'd still be skinny enough to fit in um, that other direction. So with a front and a back, right now we are in business. All right, but we don't have a bottom. This was serving as a bottom, but it's gonna still be the bottom. We've moved, it around, moved this around and shifted it around a little bit, but I think we still should be okay. Yeah, most definitely. So, all I really need to do is connect these with the piece that I have here. I can connect these right here. And then um, I can run a couple of bottom boards underneath like I had on that last one. We're gonna run a couple of bottom pieces across the bottom to connect them. That way we'll have them connected and this, this right here will be, still be fine for the sides and everything of this uh, bonsai uh, tree right now. So I'm gonna have to make some connections, make some cuts, and we'll be, be back in a click. So here we have a prefabbed box. It's not pretty, but it's gonna form 
the function for the winter storage of this tree, which I still haven't really technically unpotted from here. We just need to see if it fits in here. So I got my two bottom rungs here to keep it off the ground, get some airflow in there. The back is a little bit lower, so we're gonna see how much of an issue that is. If uh, I can, here we go. So we're gonna lift it up. And it fits just in there ever so snugly. There we go. There we go. All right. Now the bottom isn't connected but with four screws, so I gotta be careful when I transport this when there's all kinds of soil in here. So I'm gonna put it over there by the cabin now, and it's gonna just be on the cabin until we put it into the cold frame. But before we do anything else to add weight to this, we're gonna see if it's gonna fit in the doorway. because so I think we got 17 here and 18 here. And remember, we have to be under 17 and seven eighths. Let's go check it out. So the challenge of this tree has always been getting it in the doorway when it's too tall and the bottom is really thick. So when I add a whole bunch of new bonsai soil in here, I'm gonna have to put like some saran on top. So when I tip it over, all the soil doesn't come running out. But we're not gonna put it in today for final, and I haven't put all the extra dirt in here yet. So we're just gonna go ahead and we're just gonna see if I can finagle this thing into the cold frame before we add any of that extra weight without damaging the tree. So it looks like we have the narrowness we need. And it looks like it's gonna fit in the door. I just have to bring it all the way in and then stand it up. The branches are in good shape. Yep, so I just need about another foot and I just have to move my, my shelf system back here and we will get this guy in for the winter storage. So we're gonna wait right now and we're just gonna put the dirt in it for now. And we'll shift it later. So, whew, we got it to work. So now I'm going to put the rest of the dirt in so we can make sure this re re these roots um, are no longer disturbed anymore today. So let's get some soil back over here from our tarp. So looking down at the tree, you'll notice this gap right here in the front where this wasn't a perfect square that I made. So I'm going to put a two by four in there so we don't waste soil dropping down that crack. So we'll put that in next. And then I saved all my rubbery uh, insulator things that we can use to fill in the gap some more. So let's do that next. All right, making sure the roots are kind of untucked. All right, and then I can take my black foamy strips and I can tuck just two of those in there. This one's too big. I'm gonna stuff this one on this side. And now we are good to go to put the rest of that uh, bonsai soil in. It worked out pretty good. So the tree has been semi-repotted. 
I didn't disturb very much of the roots. I didn't cut any roots out. They were just exposed for a little while. We're gonna give this a good watering now when I'm all done chopping it down. So I'm gonna go get a chopstick and start uh, getting rid of some of the air pockets I might've created. And then we'll water this thing. And it'll be good to sit here on the deck of the cabin for at least two to three more weeks, maybe even four, uh, right around that Halloween time. If things are getting pretty uh, nasty out here in Minnesota, we'll put this thing in the cabin. And I'll have to maybe shoot some video of that because now that this is so heavy, this is gonna be a beast and probably be very humorous to watch me try to get it in there without breaking any limbs, right? So let's go get some chopsticks. We'll get the hose all ready to water this thing down and then we'll just keep it here for the rest of fall. So even though I didn't really repot this one truly and disturb too many roots, I know there's gonna be a lot of air pockets in here and so just to, as a precaution, I want to make sure that I tamp down some of these uh, bonsai soil particles so we have a better balance of that oxygen and the soil and the water when I water this thing. So just by doing that, I've already lowered some of the rock levels. The rocks are falling all in the crevices. And again, I didn't do a repot completely. So this thing wasn't a severe repot where there's much holes down below. Just these sides with this new smaller, smaller box for this guy for the winter. And since the roots looked all healthy and I saw a lot of them coming out from the bottom and the sides, I know that I can probably go ahead and repot this in my bonsai, uh, bonsai pot next spring. I'm feeling pretty good about that. There's a slight chance I'd let this go one more uh, season and let this grow more, um, but uh, I'm probably gonna put it in a bonsai pot. We'll see, we'll see what spring brings. So I'm gonna reposition this now. So there we have it, sitting by some of the other trees that are waiting to go into the, the bonsai cabin cold frame. Let's get that water on and give it a nice dosing. So there we go. We're getting this thing all watered real nice. It's already running out of the bottom there. I tried to do this repot as quickly as I can and disturb as few roots as possible because it's not really a repot. It's just kind of a sub pot, a box if you will, to make sure this fits in my cabin cold frame because my cold frame in the garage is definitely too small. So plenty of water and she will be good to go for another season. So there you have it. Before we go today, let's do a quick update for you. The update today is gonna to be on the Jumbo Lilac. Had a few people chatting, me, chatting with me, sending me some messages to give an update on how that Lilac ever turned out. And you know, it's interesting for how much these grow like a weed from the ground up with all the whips, all the suckers that grow up. And I've cut them back multiple times this year. Uh, what is amazing to me is that the growth this year was pretty slow. Now, one of the things I'd like to uh, make sure you all know about lilacs, even though the leaves are really big, if you uh, defoliate in the summer, you'll get some smaller leaves. So I got some smaller leaves and that worked pretty well this year. But you, when you water your lilacs, at least my experience, is that you have to be careful of fungus. I've had fungus issues with my lilacs from the beginning. And this one on the left side is looking pretty good, but we got some of that uh, kind of uh, brown, um, this one's kind of drying up and wilting away a little bit here, but we've got some fungus over here on this side. And this is the closest to the water source when I was watering my other bonsai on the bench. So residual water would go on here a lot. When I water this guy, I water the lilac underneath the uh, pads all the time. I just get the water under here so I don't put a lot of water on these uh, leaves. Now, some people will say, well, it rains on the leaves. What's the problem? Well, remember everybody, when we water our bonsai in the summer, every day, sometimes twice a day, there's always water around. And if you don't, you don't have direct sun uh, on this guy and he's off in slight shade, which this one was for a while. And if it was getting water every single day, it never, it never has time, uh, not a break. So there's just always moisture looming around here. And so be careful, but this is the, uh, the lilac after a defoliation 
uh, midway to two-thirds of the way through the summer. I defoliated many of the branches, but not all of them. And we got some smaller leaves that grew back. Got some really tiny buds up here that didn't really take off too far, but that's okay. If the whole tree had that size leaves, it would be fantastic. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what it does next year. Because um, I did all the carvings earlier in the year, and this uh, summer I just let it grow, and we got some more ramification. It split a little bit, and um, it's, still, it's still alive and doing well. So will I get any flowers in year three next year? That'll be the uh, interesting uh, uh, um, uh, research project. I got all the buds sticking out of here in all these different areas. There's two buds. And that's going to be third year growth for some of these spots. And so hopefully we'll get a couple of lilac flowers hanging from this. And again, granted it's big and huge right now, we'll keep working on bringing it back, cutting it back, and making sure these leaves with some defoliation get kind of smaller and smaller. It'll make it a little bit more uh, uh, realistic uh, uh, according to the scale of the tree. So there's the update. It is the jumbo lilac uh, dug out of the ground about two years ago now. First year in a bonsai pot. And uh, can't wait to see what happens next year. That's it for today, everybody. For Dave's Bonsai, I'm Dave Weiss. Thank you so much for all your comments. Keep them on. All, any questions, comments, suggestions, I take it all. I look at them. I try to respond to everybody. Uh, hit a like there for me. Tell your friends about me. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, see what happens for the next episode. Beautiful fall day. Glad you could join me. Stay safe, everybody. And we'll see you on the next one. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Dave's Bonsai. Uh, in the sense that I have a branch that splits into two shoots in here, so I'm probably going to cut this thing off right about here this fall. I've taken my uh, knob cutter and I've gotten rid of some of that. So I just put them on the bottom, growing upwards into the so bay. We fill up the trees and then we water as we need to. We try to get rid of those air pockets.